Let me actually invite Rob to share more of what they're doing in Spotify, leveraging this platform. Hey, Rob. Thanks. Thanks, Sudhir. And quick show of hands, who's familiar with Spotify? OK, I thought so. So I don't have to explain myself quite that much. So my name's Rob. I'm a product manager at Spotify responsible for data collection. And data is the foundation of almost everything we do at Spotify. For example, we'll analyze your listening habits, package together 30 songs which we think you're going to like, but you, you probably haven't discovered yet, put them in a 30-song playlist, and deliver it to you every Monday. That's called Discover Weekly, and it's one of Spotify's most popular features. But we use data for so much more than personalization recommendation. If you listen to a track or a podcast, uh, we record that so that way we can pay the artist, the label, and the other rights holders. Then we use data for business intelligence to determine what features we should build next. And we use data to run experiments on those features to figure out if they were any good. And the list goes on. At the center of all this is the event delivery infrastructure, and that's what my team is responsible for. So in 2016, Spotify was moving to the cloud. The on-premise event delivery infrastructure was processing a million and a half events per second, and this was growing quickly. And we, as a company, had an opportunity to get to the cloud as fast as possible. So we were willing to accept some tech debt in order to make the migration path backwards compatible for data production and data consumption. By doing this, this was a great decision in 2016 as we were able to get to the cloud, but now it's having some adverse effects on our data quality, and I'll get to that in a second. So this is what the architecture looks like in 2018. So to explain a little bit about what's going on in the diagram, if you listen to a track or podcast on your mobile phone, we send that to the access point where we log the data to disk. And the fact that we log this to disk and the libraries we use to do so, this is really the tech debt that's been giving us problems. Then a process picks up the data from the access point, sends it to PubSub. The ETL process reads it from PubSub, puts it in an hourly bucket with all the other like data that was produced that hour, removes duplicates, makes it GDPR compliant, and puts it in its final resting location in cloud storage. At this point, we have an immutable data set accessible to the rest of the company. But things changed drastically from moving to cloud in 2016 to getting to this point in 2018. The big one which swept through the industry was GDPR. And we did design with user privacy in mind in 2016, but GDPR was an entirely different animal. We had to adapt the architecture drastically to be able to meet the, the new compliance needs. More interesting changes, perhaps, was just how popular BigQuery became with Spotify's data science community and the industry in general. And similarly, the popularity of consuming data in a streaming fashion, whereas we had only designed the system to support batch. So as you see at the top of the diagram there, we have it's almost a different event delivery infrastructure to support streaming. But possibly an even bigger change was our explosion of scale. So in 2016, the on-premise infrastructure had a million and a half events per second. So we designed the cloud solution for four and a half, so triple. Two years later, we far exceeded our design. So we had eight, almost 8 million events per second in 2018. And I tend to think about data in, or the size of data in events per second. But the real wow numbers is what I just pulled up this morning. 502 ev billion events every day. So over half a trillion events every day. And that's 350 terabytes of data produced every day. And the thing is, data increases faster than just with your number of users. As the company becomes more and more successful, you invest more and more in your data and insights community, which then increases the demand for data and therefore also the supply. So we need to make sure that we're ready for the next several years of quadratic scale increase. So late last year, we decided it was time to rebuild. We want to be ready for the scale of the future, but we also want to make sure that we're designing with 2019's tech landscape in mind. Concretely, that means we, take we want to take advantage of the latest and greatest from Google Cloud, latest and greatest from Spotify's core infrastructure, and design with GDPR in mind from the beginning. And the business value that we get from this is to remove the tech debt 
and improve Spotify's data quality to unlock lots more. So the strategy that we're taking in order to achieve this, we're redesigning the way that you produce data. So the, we've added SDKs for all the different ways that people use Spotify. We've changed what the data looks like on the other side. So we've uh, updated the schemas and changed the consumption format. And we've redesigned the workflow that users use to add new data sets and to modify schemas. Once we've uh, redesigned these interfaces, we, put the we spun up the old infrastructure behind the new interfaces and began moving some production traffic over. And we're able to do this easily because of, largely because of the cloud. Once the code is all ready, we press some buttons, we pay some money, and now we have two massive event delivery systems running with production data. And while that's going on, while we move more and more production data over to the new infrastructure, which is at this point new interfaces with the old infrastructure, the real rebuild is happening under the surface. So this is where we are today, so November 2019. Because we changed the interfaces, because we wanted to double down on Kubernetes and Dataflow, we've had to re rebuild almost all the components that we had in the 2018 infrastructure. So everything you see in a green circle there is new. Um, yes. Uh, you can see that streaming is still sort of an appendage there. We've managed to reduce streaming from a separate infrastructure to a Dataflow job, which uh, is doing some schema transformation in GDPR. And there's more that we can do there. But this, this is where we're at today. And the preliminary results have been super promising. We've managed to reduce costs significantly, both in terms of actual dollars, but also in terms of operational savings. But the hidden benefit here has been that spot our engineers are now able to focus more on what's giving real value. So in this case, it's improving the data quality, as opposed to putting out fires that we had from the scale we didn't expect, or focusing on tech debt. So we changed the wheels of the bus while it's moving. We moved 23% of production traffic to the new infrastructure. But now it's time to try to change the engine. We've been working heavily with Google. And this is still aspirational. But we've been working heavily with Google to make this the reality. And we firmly believe that an event delivery architecture of this scale can be just a service publishing to PubSub and a data flow job, which do, does all the parts of the ETL and puts it in the three places where Spotify's data community would like to read the data. So we're doubling down on our investment in infrastructure so we can stop investing so much in infrastructure in the future. And isn't that why we're all moving to cloud in the first place? If you thought this was exciting, we've got some blog posts on Spotify Labs where you can read more. There's three blog posts which articulate how we moved to the cloud in the first place, as well as some war stories along the way. And then there's a blog post we published last week which talks about the last two years and the experience there. And if you found this really exciting, we're hiring. 